Our next topic is getting to know the calculate function. Now the calculate function is going to be your new best friend. Uh, it is the basis on which almost all of the future magic, all of the magic stuff that we're going to learn about power pivot uh, is rooted in those filter context rules that we discussed in the last, uh, the last section, uh, combined with the calculate function. Um, and the calculate function is, it's really simple, uh, simple to learn. And uh, I'm reminded of the old uh, Othello game boxes that said, a minute to learn, a lifetime to master. And and I also like the fact that it's ages eight to adult. That's about that's about right for uh, for uh, calculate as well. Now, uh, a lifetime to master in the in the sense of calculate doesn't mean that it's a lifetime before you feel comfortable with it. I actually think that you will feel comfortable with calculate in the first minute. Uh, the lifetime to master is much more along the lines of this. Let's say your learning curve with calculate looks something like this. Okay. Now, this vertical axis, as we're climbing higher, this isn't a, uh, an indication so much of complexity as it is an indication of power. And so you might start off, let's say, down, you know, down around here. And it's not like you're down here looking up the curve and saying, wow, this is daunting. This is really um, difficult stuff ahead of me. It's more like everywhere on your curve as you're making this nice smooth climb, every time you look back at what you did before, you're really impressed with what you're doing today. And this is a, a phenomenon that I am very familiar with. For the first few years that I used Power Pivot, uh, I would build something amazing like a dashboard or a report that just simply couldn't be built before. It was just game changing. But then three months later, I'd look back on that same dashboard and go, man, the stuff, the stuff that I'm making today is just so much better than that. Uh, and then three months after that, well, the process would repeat. And that still happens for me uh, about every six months now. But my hope is that with the help of, uh, of classes like this, you will also experience that phenomenon. And it might even be uh, less than three months uh, every step. Now, as always, we're going to start with an example. Now, say that I've got this pivot table here. It's very simple. Um, I have total sales, uh, a total sales measure, and I have a slicer on category. Um, and what I find myself doing with this, with this pivot table over and over again is looking at total sales and clicking bikes because, you know, bikes is our biggest uh, biggest seller. It's the majority of our business. So I click bikes just to see, well, okay, so it was 8.8 .8 million of bikes in Australia. And I clear this filter, clear the slicer and go back to nine. Okay. So that tells me that I've got about 8.8 you know, .8 out of 9 million uh, of my sales in Australia uh, are from bikes. And then well, ah, is that is that kind of the same thing that I've got in the UK? So I've got three point, almost 3.4 million. I Okay, so it's almost 3.3. .3, so it's it's close. So I find myself back and forth all the time with this with this slicer, and um, you know I guess I could to do this comparison. I guess I could drag category to like to column labels, for instance. But now I've got things in here like uh, accessories and clothing, which I really don't want to see either. And and filtering those out is kind of a pain. So um, this is a great place to start uh, with the with the, um, the calculate function. Let's, let's take a look at it. Now, the calculate function is really a lot like some if, uh, or some ifs. It's very, very, very simple. Uh, we'll take a quick look at what the, what the function definition looks like, and then we'll come back here. Okay, so calculate really only takes uh, two kinds of parameters, two kinds of inputs. So the first input uh, to calculate is a measure expression. And the, then everything after that is a series of filters. Uh, so that's why it's kind of like some if or some ifs. Um, and the measure expression is really typically, we're just going to give the name of an existing measure uh, as this first as this first input. And then you know we can sometimes also give a formula that would that would be uh, a valid formula for a measure. but most of the time, that kind of violates our um, our rule that we don't like to rewrite formulas. Uh, so 
typically we're going to be using the name of a measure. And then for the filter arguments, the filter inputs, um, they're typically something like table name, column name equals, uh, and then if it's a text value, it goes in quotes. So like we could set category equal to bikes, for instance. Um, and if it's a number, we just set it equal to the number without the quotes. Uh, we can also do uh, operations like greater than, greater than, or equal to, things like that. Um, and there's a lot more about Calculate, even though it's, it really only has these two kinds of inputs. Um, we're going to leave the advanced stuff uh, uh, on the back burner for a second, and let's just go look at how, uh, how much we can do, which is quite a bit, uh, just with what I've showed you here uh, so far. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use calculate to give me a measure that is, uh, we'll call it just bike sales. Imagine if we had a column here that, that was always just showing us the bike sales, no matter what was going on with our, with our slicers. Maybe we don't even have a slicer. We want to just see uh, bike sales next door to total sales in our pivot table. So that's what we're going to build, and it's going to be very simple. Uh, so we're going to add a measure. We're going to call it, as I said, just bike sales. And we're going to use calculate, as you would expect. And so we start out with a measure. Uh, they call it expression, but we, you can think of it as being, uh, this is where you put a measure name or, or a formula for a measure, as I mentioned. And what we're going to do is we're going to do total sales because that's what we want. We want total sales that's been filtered to just bike sales. Okay, so the we start out with total sales. That's our base uh, measure, and then the the uh, the column that contains category is in the products table. So products category equals. I'm going to resize this formula window equals, because this is a text column, I have to put bikes in, in, uh, in double quotes. Okay, so I close off the calculate. And because this is a, a sales measure, it's just a, a filtered version of total sales, I'm going to give it the same currency formatting that I give to sales. Let's see what we get. So there we go, just bike sales. So remember, I had to flip back and forth before using the, using the slicer. To, to toggle these. And so what I've really got here now is uh, two columns of my pivot, uh, one of which is filtered at all times by bikes as if I had a slicer that was only working on this one column. And I have another column that is completely unfiltered in terms of category. So this is really, really fantastic. You can now have, within a single pivot table, you can have uh, columns that are filtered as if they were separate pivot tables and calculate is our doorway to that. Uh, and I, we, we don't have to stop here either. We can add another measure and we can call it uh, percent of all sales coming from bikes. Okay. And so we just take our original, uh, well, we take our, our uh, just bike sales measure and we divide it by our original total sales measure. And this will set to be a, uh, a percentage with one decimal place, OK? And so now I have the percentage uh, you know, by region, by sales region. And I can come over here, and I can actually just type region over the top of that. Um, and I can, take, uh, I can take total sales and just bike sales off of the pivot and my percent of all sales coming from bikes measure works uh, completely standalone and i like to sometimes do this sort uh, largest to smallest and i'm a huge fan of uh, conditional formatting so let's add a little bit of conditional formatting here and we can sort of see the you know quickly stands out uh, sort of our our, our pattern. So something in Central is different. There's a, a pretty big drop off from Canada to Central, and that's something worth looking into. Uh, why is it that our Central region is selling uh, so much of stuff outside of the bikes category relative to our, our other sales regions?
we'll come back to this ratio and percentage concept over and over again. So don't don't worry about it for now if that doesn't if that didn't uh, make sense. I'm going to take that percentage measure off of the pivot for now and uh, add back the total sales measure. The checkbox wasn't working for some reason. The and then the just just bike sales. I'm going to bring those two back onto the uh, onto the pivot for a moment. And let's take region off and drag category from slicer onto rows instead. You see, well, we should, should maybe re update our um, our uh, row label here. Now you'll you'll notice something here, which is that for bikes, you know, 28 million. That's what we have. 28.3 million is what we have for for bikes. Uh, and certainly that matches here. But the thing that often uh, confuses people is that the accessories, uh, for instance, is also um, evaluating to the same number as bikes. And um, you, know, you might have expected this to be zero or blank or something like that. Um, but I think it's time for us to explain how calculate fits into the into the bigger picture so that we can understand this behavior. First, it all comes back to this reference card, uh, and it helps to revisit this uh, as many times as you need to in order to get it ingrained and have it become instinct. So uh, the first step in the measure calculation process is that the pivot table uh, sends in some coordinates uh, of the, of, remember, it's one cell at a time that's calculated in for measures. And so for a particular cell, the pivot table sends in its uh, coordinates for that cell. And we skip step two. We're going to keep skipping, skipping it for a second. And then in step three, those coordinates are converted into filters and applied to the underlying tables. Uh, and then in step four, those filters then flow down from uh, lookup tables into data tables uh, if, if relationships exist. Uh, and then finally, once all the filtering is done, then the math kicks in uh, and runs against only the rows that are left standing. And that number gets sent back to the pivot table. Uh, and then the pivot table moves on to the next cell and the process repeats uh, you know, from completely from scratch. Now, so you can visualize this process uh, as an assembly line. And um, this assembly line has two two different machines in it. It has the filtering machine and it has the math machine. And uh, this whole thing, this whole process flows from left to right. So the filtering machine gets hit first uh, and then only later does the, does the math machine kick in. And the, the pivot table has a, uh, has, you know, sends in a set of filters and those get plopped onto the assembly line and fed into the filtering machine that filters tables down and, and then also um, propagates those filters across relationships as needed. Uh, and that produces one or more uh, set of, uh, produces a set of filtered tables. And those tables then get put on the, the next conveyor belt. And that's what gets sent into the math machine, which based on those rows produces some number, sends it back to the pivot, and then, as I said, the process repeats itself for um, uh, for the next uh, measure cell. Let's take a look at that process specifically for our pivot table. If we rewind a little bit to the place where all we had was total sales and region uh, and, a, and a category slicer. Uh, for that particular pivot table and for the highlighted cell next to Australia, the, the pivot table is going to send in a filter context that only has one coordinate in it, and that is territories region equals Australia. So that's the only filter coordinate in the filter context, and that's what's going to be sent into the machine to be processed uh, and ultimately turned into a number. But when our pivot table had the slicer clicked to bikes, that same cell uh, now sends in two coordinates in the filter context. Uh, Australia, just like it was before, but now also has the products category column 
set to bikes. So those two get sent into the machine. Now you might be thinking right now, uh, hey, that's great, Rob. What a great explanation. But uh, you're supposed to be explaining calculate. And we haven't heard about calculate in a few minutes. So uh, here we're getting to it right now. So for this pivot table uh, that has both the total sales and the just bike sales measure on it, uh, for the highlighted cell, and we have nothing selected on category, on the category slicer, so there's, this is not contributing anything to our filter context. So the filter context for the highlighted cell is just like it was before, territories, region, uh, equals Australia. And that goes through the machine as normal, and we come up with, with 9 million. When the pivot table, though, gets to this cell, what is the filter context uh, in that case? Hey, guess what? It's exactly the same. It also only has the Australia coordinate. It doesn't have any, um, any different coordinate, at least not from the perspective of the pivot table. Let's watch what happens downstream, though. So we have our territories region equals Australia. Uh, and uh, that's being sent. It gets sent into the, the, uh, the pipeline. Um, but because this particular um, measure uh, is a calculate, something additional happens, which is the calculate gets uh, inserted, essentially. It manages to, it gets in between the original filter context and the filtering engine, and it adds some things. It, you can think of it as actually going through. It's almost like it's, it's opening up this box and adding, changing, removing. But in this case, it's just going to be adding things to the filter context. And what is it going to add? Well, it adds its filter arguments. It, sorry, its filter inputs. It only has one. It adds products category equal to bikes into the filter context. So we end up with a filter context that had the still has the original territories region equals Australia, but now also has products category equal to bikes. Um, it's really exactly the same thing as if Calculate managed to kind of sneak in here uh, at the last minute and click the bikes uh, slicer um, before the filters the filter coordinates go into the filter engine. So these two um, get sent into the the uh, filtering engine, and that produces a different set of filtered tables uh, than it would if it was just the territories region equals Australia. And that, of course, gets sent in, and then it goes, gets passed on into the calculation engine, and we get an answer back as if bikes had been clicked here, or as if bikes was on uh, was a was a, a coordinate of this cell, even though it wasn't, uh, at least not from the perspective of the of the pivot table. So you'll sometimes hear me refer to this as our initial filter context, uh, and then Calculate got in there and modified it. So we have a modified filter context that is used for the evaluation of this particular measure. Okay, let's return to our mysterious example where the just bike sales measure was returning uh, 28.3 million, which is the number for bikes, uh, even for the accessories row of a pivot table. Let's step through it. So we have an initial filter context for the highlighted cell. The, the only coordinate there is products category equals accessories. And that's what the pivot table is going to send in to the, um, to the power pivot formula engine. Uh, but the, uh, the formula is a calculate. So we have uh, an intermediate step before anything can get into the filtering engine, uh, the calculate gets in there and works its magic, which in this case results in the uh, products category um, uh, coordinate being overwritten by the calculate and set to bikes. So it's as if the um, this cell, the accessory cell, by the time it gets into this, this step and then gets processed, the cell that we're looking at here, it's as if it had been sitting next to bikes on the pivot all along as, as far as the power pivot uh, engine is concerned. Um, so the, the pivot table sends in a coordinate of accessories, but it gets a number back for bikes. Uh, it has no idea that it, you know, that it got tricked, essentially. It's no big deal. Uh, only the power pivot engine knows 
that something happened in between. So that's going to be important uh, occasionally in sort of like debugging and troubleshooting situations. Um, it's not that you're going to run into this very often. It's very silly to have a measure that sets something to to be you know, a particular field to be something like bikes, and then use that same field on your pivot table. This is not something you're going to do very often. Um, but every now and then you're going to wonder what happened. And so this is why we, we cover it, is that um, when the pivot table sends in a coordinate on a, on a field, on a column, and the calculate has an opinion about that exact same column, the calculate is going to win. And it's going to be, it's just going to overwrite it. The original filter sent in is going to be completely, uh, essentially overwritten and removed in favor of what the calculate says. And that's what happens when it's exactly the same uh, column that's, uh, that's being sort of uh, fought over. So if the pivot and calculate both have an opinion about the same column, uh, calculate wins. Lastly, we can now come back to the reference card and see uh, that step two, where it fits in. And you can sort of envision uh, that magic wand sort of coming in in step two and, and, and modifying the filters that came in from step one uh, before those filters are handed into the filtering engine, which is steps three and four. Um, so I'm not, I don't, I don't plan to use the, uh, the assembly line graphics anymore. That was just sort of a, uh, an introductory thing. Uh, we're going to stick to the grown up reference card from here on out. Um, but yeah, I think this completes the circle. And now um, yeah, there isn't a step seven in this reference card. We've seen all six and um, we've built the foundation for some really amazing stuff.